we're going to talk about percent composition, which is given a compound, find the mass percent of a certain element in the compound. The formula we use for this is mass percent of element x in molecule y is equal to the mass of element x in one mole of molecule y divided by the molar mass of molecule y all times 100. So let's look at an example of how we use this equation. Calculate the mass percent of oxygen in KNO2. Step 1. Find the mass of oxygen in one mole of KNO2. Since there are two moles of oxygen per one mole of KNO2, we simply multiply two moles of oxygen by 15.999 grams per mole, which is the atomic mass or the molar mass of oxygen, and we get 31.998 grams of oxygen per mole of KNO2. Step 2. Find the molar mass of KNO2. We know how to do this by dissecting KNO2 into K, N, and O, and multiplying each element's atomic mass by the respective amounts in the molecule. We do that here, and we find that KNO2 has a molar mass of 85.103 grams per mole. Step 3. Find the mass percent of oxygen. For this, we will use the equation. The mass percent of oxygen in KNO2 is equal to the mass of oxygen in one mole of KNO2, which we calculated to be 31.998 grams of oxygen per mole, divided by the molar mass of KNO2, which is 85.103, all times 100, which equals 37.6% mass oxygen. Next, we're going to talk about empirical formula. Given the molecular formula of a compound, we will be able to find the empirical formula. Let's see how we do this. The key is to divide the subscripts of the molecular formula by their lowest common denominator. This is similar to when we were finding the formulas of ionic compounds when we looked at the subscripts, found the lowest common denominator, and divided each subscript by the lowest common denominator. So let's look at an example of how we find empirical formulas from molecular formulas. For example, if you were given C10H22 as an example of a molecular formula, and we wanted to find its empirical formula, we would look at the subscripts 10 and 22 and find the lowest common denominator. When we look at 10 and 22, we find that the lowest common denominator is 2. So then we simply divide 10 by 2 and 22 by 2 to get C5H11. C5H11 is the empirical formula of C10H22. Let's look at another example. C4H8O2. We look at 4, 8, and 2 and find the lowest common denominator of all three of those digits. The lowest common denominator is again 2. We then divide 4 by 2, 8 by 2, and 2 by 2 to get an empirical formula of C2H4O. Again, with C6H12O6, we look at 6, 12, and 6, and find the lowest common denominator. Here, the lowest common denominator is 6. We divide 6 by 6, 12 by 6, and 6 by 6 to get an empirical formula of CH2O. Again, with P4O10, we look at 4 and 10, and find the lowest common denominator to be 2. We simply divide 4 by 2 and 10 by 2 to get P2O5. Finally, N2O5. We look at 2 and 5 to find the lowest common denominator to be 1. We divide 2 by 1 and 5 by 1 
to get an empirical formula of N2O5. Here, the molecular formula is the same thing as the empirical formula. Now we're going to look at the opposite process. If we were given the empirical formula and the molar mass of a molecular formula, we want to find the molecular formula. An example, a compound has the empirical formula C3H2Cl and a molar mass of 147 grams per mole. Find its molecular formula. So its empirical formula is C3H2Cl and its molecular mass or its molar mass is 147 grams per mole. Step 1. Find the formula mass of the empirical formula. We've said before the empirical formula is C3H2Cl. So we're going to find the formula mass of CH, C3H2Cl. And that is 73.502 grams per mole. Step 2. Divide the molar mass by the empirical formula mass and round to the nearest whole number. So we're going to divide the molar mass of the molecular formula, which is 147 by the empirical formula mass, which we just calculated to be 73.502, which comes out to be 1.999. We're now going to round to the nearest whole number, which is 2. Step 3. Multiply the subscripts of the empirical formula by the result of step 2. So we're going to multiply the subscripts in C3H2Cl by 2. 3 times 2, 2 times 2, and 1 times 2, which gives us a final answer of C6H4Cl2, which is our molecular formula. Next we're going to talk about elemental analysis. Given the mass percent composition of a compound, find the empirical formula of the compound. Let's do an example. The painkiller codeine has a mass percent composition of 72.22% carbon, 7.07% hydrogen, 4.68% nitrogen, and 16.03% oxygen. The key to solving these problems is to always assume there are 100 grams of the compound present. So we're going to assume that we have 100 grams of this painkiller codeine that we know has a mass percent composition of 72.22% carbon, 7.07% hydrogen, 4.68% nitrogen, and 16.03% oxygen. Step 1. Find the mass of each element present. If we wanted to find the mass of carbon present, we simply take 72.22% of 100 grams, which is the same thing as multiplying 100 grams times 0 0.7222, which comes out to 72.22 grams of carbon. If we wanted to find the mass present of hydrogen, we would simply take 7.07% of 100 grams, which is the same thing as multiplying 100 grams times 0 0.0707 to get 7.07 .07 grams. If we wanted the mass of nitrogen present, we simply take 4.68% of 100 grams, which is 4.68 grams you should begin to be catching on to the pattern here. If we wanted to find the mass percent, or rather the mass present of oxygen, we simply take 16.03% of 100 grams, which is 16.03 grams of oxygen. Next, find the moles of each element present. To find the moles of carbon present, we simply divide the mass of carbon, which is 72.22 grams, by its molar mass of 12.011 grams per mole, which is equal to 6.013 moles of carbon. If we wanted to find moles of hydrogen, we simply divide 7.07 .07 grams of hydrogen by its molar mass of 1.008 grams per mole. 
which is 6.93993 moles. If we wanted to find the mass of nitrogen, we simply divide the mass of nitrogen, 4.68 grams, by 14.007 grams per mole, which is its molar mass, which gives us 0 0.334 moles of nitrogen. And finally, again with oxygen, we divide the mass of oxygen, 16.03 grams, by 15.999 grams per mole, which is the molar mass of oxygen, to get 1.002 moles of oxygen. Step 3. Identify the element with the lowest amount of moles present. So we're going to look at our amount of moles of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. We have 6.013 moles of carbon, 6.993 moles of hydrogen, 0 0.33 moles of nitrogen, and 1.002 moles of oxygen. We're going to identify the lowest number of those four numbers. And that is 0 0.334 moles of nitrogen. That is the lowest number out of the four moles present. Step 4. Divide each amount of moles by the lowest amount of moles present. We're, so we're going to divide all of these moles present by this number, 0 0.334 moles. So we're going to divide 6.013 by 0.334, 6.993 by 0.334, by 0 0.334, 1.002 moles by 0.334, and so on. So we're going to divide each amount of moles by the lowest amount of moles present, which we identified to be 0 0.334 moles. And once we've done this, we're going to round to the nearest whole number or nice fraction. So if we can round to 0 0.5, 0 0.33, or 0 0.25, we're going to do that, or we're going to round to the nearest whole number. So we're going to divide all these numbers by 0 0.334, and we're going to get our answers, 18, 21, 1, and 3. If one of these results is a fraction, multiply the entire set of results by the lowest possible whole number so that all the fractions are eliminated. Now in here, in this case, we don't have to do anything because the entire set of results are whole numbers. However, if the results were 18, 21, 1, and 2.5, for example, we would have to multiply the entire set of numbers by 2 to get rid of the 2.5. That's the lowest whole number to multiply the entire set to get rid of the fractions. Multiplying by 1 would leave it with 2.5, so the next whole number is 2. Multiplying 2.5 by 2 will give you 5. But let's go back to our actual case with whole numbers and move on. In this case, we don't have to do that step. 6. The results of step 5 are the subscripts for each element in the empirical formula. So we take this, the results for C, the results for H, the results for N, and the results for O, and we just put that number in subscripts next to the, the, the element in the empirical formula. So in this case, we just put C18, H21, N1, and O3, because that's exactly the results that we get. And this is our empirical formula and our final answer to the question. Let's look at another example. Vitamin C has a percent by mass composition of 40.00% C, 6.71% hydrogen, and 53.29% O, or oxygen, with a molecular mass of 180 grams per mole. What is its molecular formula? So here, we're going to have to find our empirical formula first, and from there, find our molecular formula. Again, always assume there is 100 grams of the compound present. So we're going to assume that there are 100 grams of vitamin C, which has the given composition. 
Step 1. Find the mass of each element present. For carbon, we take 40% of 100 grams again to get 40.00 grams. For hydrogen, we take 6.71% of 100 grams to give us 6.71 grams. For oxygen, we just take 53.29% of 100 grams and we get 53.29 grams. You should definitely be able to catch on to the pattern. Step two, find the moles of each element present. So for carbon, we divide 40 grams by its molar mass of 12.011 grams per mole to get 3.33 moles. For hydrogen, we divide 6.71 grams by 1.008 grams per mole to get 6.657 moles. And again, for oxygen, divide 53.29 by 15.999 grams per mole to give us 3.331 moles of oxygen. 3. Identify the element with the lowest amount of moles present. So we look at 3.330, 6.657, and 3.331, and we identify the lowest amount of moles present. And that is 3.330 moles. Step 4. Divide each amount of moles by the lowest amount of moles present. So we're again going to divide every number by 3.330 and then round each number to the whole number or nice fraction which is 0.5 or 0.3 or 0.25. So we're going to divide every number here by 3.330. We do that, and when we round, we get 1 for carbon, 2 for hydrogen, and 1 for oxygen. If one of these results is a fraction, multiply the entire set of results by the lowest possible whole number so that all fractions are eliminated. Here again, all the results are whole numbers, so we don't need to do anything for this step. The results of step 5 are the subscripts for each element in the empirical formula. So 1 for C, 2 for H, and 1 for oxygen. Therefore the empirical formula is CH2O. However we're not done yet, since we have to find the molecular formula. Use the empirical formula and molecular mass to determine the molecular formula. So we've gone over how to do this before. We're going to find, find the empirical formula mass, which is 30 grams per mole, and our molecular mass, which is 180 grams per mole. And we simply divide 180 grams per mole by 30 grams per mole, which is our molecular formula mass, divided by our empirical formula mass, and we get 6. Now that 6 tells us that we need to multiply all the subscripts of the empirical formula by 6. So we do that here. The subscript of C in the empirical formula is 1, so we multiply that by 6. The subscript in H is 2, so we multiply that by 6. And the subscript in O is 1, so we multiply that by 6 as well. And we get, as a final answer, C6 H12O6 and this is our final molecular formula.